There's no other way to say it. Disney's new movie Lightyear stole its plot from another film. Shocking, I know. Or is it? Why would they do this? Is it because it's what the audience actually wants? Let's delve into the makeup of the film, who they stole from, and whether it's actually a good thing for audiences. Naturally, there are spoilers ahead. To appreciate what ideas were stolen and how they were used, you'll need to understand Lightyear itself. So let me give a very bare bones setup of act one. To save you time, I'm going to see if I can do it in under 30 seconds. Okay, here we go. We first meet Buzz with his best friend and fellow ranger Alicia as they get attacked on planet Takana Prime. They try to escape, but Buzz crashes the ship, stranding himself and the hundreds of crew on the planet, as well as damaging the fuel source they need to leave. Buzz then tries new variants of the fuel, but oh no, every time he does the fuel test, he ages minutes while everyone on Takana ages years, meaning that he ultimately comes back to find Alicia has died from old age before he could get her and everyone else home. The only saving grace to the situation is his cute new robotic cat socks that Alicia has gifted to him end at one. Phew, I think I made it. Now that all sounds like some good clean family fun. Surely there's no theft going on. Well, where before have we had a protagonist misplaced into another world desperately wanting to go home? That's right. The Wizard of Oz. Buzz in Lightyear is the substitute for Julie Garden's Dorothy, who is whisked away by a tornado into the land of Oz. Like Dorothy, his external character goal is to get home. Dorothy has with her her famous sidekick, Toto the dog. In Buzz's case, he is gifted Socks the cat from his recently deceased best pal Alicia. Both Toto and Socks provide help to the main character, as well as comic relief, though the latter is more so from Socks than Toto. So our protagonist and sidekick were lifted from The Wizard of Oz in part, but what else did they take in the Munchkin Land heist? To explain that, you'll need to understand the beginning of Act 2, so here we go again, I'll promise I'll be as quick as I can. In Act 2, Buzz gets back to Takana Prime to find out that evil Emperor Zerg has taken over. After escaping from his old quarters, now overrun with baddies, Buzz stumbles upon Alicia's now grown-up granddaughter Izzy, who along with a ragtag group of misfits, are surviving as rookie players in the Colony Defense Force. Buzz must buddy up with the incompetent group to take down Zerg, learning the value of teamwork along the way. But what was stolen here? Let's have a look-see. In The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's human psychics are the Lion, Scarecrow, and the Tin Man. Each has their own separate desire, courage for Lion, a brain for Scarecrow, and a heart for Tin Man. Izzy is therefore Lion. She's a keen, smart rookie, but she lacks the strength of her grandmother. She wants to find courage along the way. Next up is Mo, played by Taika Waititi. He's a bit of an idiot who keeps mucking things up, but he ultimately ends up believing his skill to be, quote, ingenuity. One might say he was looking for a brain. And finally, there's the hard-nosed ex-con Darby Steele, and she needs a heart. Well, yes, I would say she does from her actions, but calm down. In Lightyear, there's not really a mention of her specifically having a heart-based arc in the same way, so I'm going to give it a half point. You should now be able to see the whole picture, that Lightyear is essentially the Wizard of Oz in space. Zerg could even be argued to be the Wicked Witch with his evil band of monkeys, i.e. the robots. But it still leaves the question of why, and why it doesn't matter they broke one of the Ten Commandments. Dun dun dun! See, you may be thinking, oh my god, that's disgusting. How dare they steal from a movie like that? I thought Pixar would come up with their own ideas. If you are, you may well be the sort of person that complains about musicians using the 1564 chord progression. Pixar know that any great creative steals for their supper. From Tarantino stealing from Japanese cinema to George Lucas stealing from the Bible. The greatest artists know creative work is a melting pot. It's why at Pixar they reject the theory of the auteur storyteller. Each movie is repeatedly picked apart by their brain trust of creative geniuses collaborating to make a better film. Listen to how Oscar-nominated Inside Out writer Meg LaFauve explained the brain trust when I interviewed her on my Red Carpet Rookies podcast. It's truly terrifying. <laughs> You know, it's so great, right? How exciting to have the Andrew Stanton's brain looking at your work, that there's nothing better, and yet there's nothing more terrifying. And this coming together of opinions, stealing of ideas, it works in other mediums too. I'd recommend this great video of Paul Simon explaining how he stole different genres to create the legendary song, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Now this part. That comes from a Bach piece. It's why in Austin Kleon's wonderful book, Still Like an Artist, he writes, The artist is a collector. Your job is to collect good ideas. Okay, that's all great, Mike, but why would the audience be happy about it? I think I'd much rather a totally original movie. The fact is, that's unlikely. Most people don't want totally original anything, certainly not in a cinema blockbuster. Hollywood popcorn going is about giving the same but different, as Blake Snyder writes in his somewhat controversial book on mainstream movie making, Save the Cat. 
Certainly for Western filmmaking at least, you're waiting for that happy ending, for those character arcs to finish. So did Lightyear steal its plot largely from The Wizard of Oz? Yes, but should you care? Not at all. If you're a filmmaker or just a fan and you'd like to hear more lessons and stories from the world's most successful filmmakers and crew, make sure to check out my podcast, Red Carpet Rookies, where I've interviewed the likes of Deadpool director Tim Miller, social network cinematographer Jeff Cronenwith, Titanic set designer Peter Lamont, and many, many more. The link is in the description below. I'll see you next time.